sweetest sea of the country. Oh, sweetest in Sweden. I think, uh, good morning, good morning. I started to be a lecturer when I was 10, 10 and 21. I started to teach, and, and in, in, my, in my teaching a career, I realized that uh, young people are generally lost, and they need, and they, they are lost with a lot of energy. And I decided then that my job will be to re redirect the energies of young people. And I started a, 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 a little ministry on campus in those days, and we used to pray with young people for their vision because you need to have a revelation of where you are going as a person in order to get there. If you don't have a revelation of who you are, you find yourself in wrong careers, you find yourself in wrong relationships. By the time you wake up in that relationship, you are divorcing and you are having five kids. You see, then you have to start again. So, but as young as you are, you must remember that you are not a creator yourself, someone created you. So now, as a leader, because you, as a young person you are a leader where you are, yes. you need to be led as well. So now, you need to have a divine force that leads you. Other people uh, believe that um, there is nothing like God, uh, but I believe that we didn't just land here, and I believe that God do exist, because in the Bible he said, we will die when we eat of the fruit and we are dying. So it makes sense to me that there is God. There is somebody who made us. So we are here because somebody is leading and guiding us. That is the first thing. And then the other thing for me is, um, what motivates me to be a leader is to impact my learning experiences with young people. So I, 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 I help people not to do the mistakes I made. You know, because if at your age I had someone who told me, don't do this, don't do this, uh, maybe my life would have been much better than it is right now. So, yeah, I, I just want to impact on people's lives. Moreover, my goal for the next five years, because I don't want to retire when I'm tired. I want to retire while I'm still full of energy. Uh, so I can travel the, the, the world and enjoy my life. Okay, my kids are grown now. So, thank God that I had them while I was still here. <laughs> so now, when I'm now a bit matured, okay, matured, in age, okay, I will retire and travel and see the world and then preach the gospel because I believe there's a bigger purpose why I'm here, more than being a principal. So being a principal for me, I just want to redefine vocational education. That is the biggest thing for me, redefining it. When I was a teacher my first year, I taught office practice. That was the first subject they gave to me. And now I was teaching my students how to fax on a book. Then I was reading to them to say, you take a paper, you put it on the machine, the machine will scan, the information will go to the other side, or will be printed on the other side. Came exam or test. One of my students said to me, when I asked, uh, they must explain the process of faxing. She said, uh, you put the paper the, uh, on the machine, then uh, you dial the number, and the paper will go through the telephone line and will land to the other side. <laughs> and, and that alone, it was in the year 2000, but I still remember it. It broke my heart. I was seriously broken mm. to say, but how can a child say the paper is traveling? Mm. I saw that. What we are doing is not vocational education. It's a theory education. We have joined universities, we have joined schools. We are not different. So now, me, my goal and my desire is to, to redefine vocational education where we bring that balance of the practice and the theory. So when the learner goes out, they go employable. You know, you, you can fax in class already. You know, one of the ISETs I said some years back, uh, before the advancements of technology. I said uh, it was consumer behavior subject. One of the questions there was, students must be able to open their email account, send email and receive emails. 
then the college, one of the college in the Eastern Cape, wrote to the department to say, no, this I said, this question must be withdrawn because they don't have internet. I said, I'm not going to withdraw it because students must graduate knowing how to fix, uh, how, how to send emails, how to open an email account. They cannot go learn that in the workplace because in the workplace we don't have time to mentor people and teach them how to open an email, how to write it, how to respond to it. So they still need to learn it while they are still in class. And my reasoning, they accepted and then the question continued. So as a leader, you must have a focus area. And my focus area is to redefine vocational education for young people. That is why you are having this place for standard in campus graduate, so they can be placed in a workplace. I have I have few of them, three or four or five of them, that are working already here. They are appreciating the opportunity because they were used to go to Joburg for placement. Now they are placed here. So that little stipend that you have, you no longer have to book accommodation with it. You can use it for your home. And that is what I call impacting lives. That's what I call redefining vocational education. That recipe she learned at Standard and Campus, they can be able to serve real people, be appreciated and criticized by real people, which to me is education. I, I, I experience a lot of criticism daily, on a daily basis. Is this part of life? And I decided to understand that we are different. And if you perceive me differently, it should not hurt me. If you think um, investing in such a thing is a waste of money, that is your opinion. But it should not affect my vision. That is, that is how I work. And I will not stop talking to you because you are different from me. So criticism will either make you or break you. And you have to make that choice to either be broken or to be made stronger and better. Um, one thing I, I, I've observed over the years though, is teamwork, respect, the, the love for your work, understanding the reason why you are in a place is very important. I worked for different colleges before I came here. I can tell you many, many people are, are destroyed by lack of unity and vision. You know, when you are working for an institution, remember it's not about you. Once you can understand that, that it's not about me, it's about the people, then you will excel in your work. Then you will stop this thing of when you are unhappy, you want to sabotage other people, because that's what is happening in the country. That's what destroys many colleges, because people cannot agree to disagree and find a common ground. It becomes very important for you to understand that matters must be resolved and you mustn't put yourself first, put other people first. Then you will see you will become a great success. So a lack of vision really destroys this great nation. So it becomes very important that um, colleges or leaders in general have a vision and the people on top of your list should be the people you are serving. And moreover, uh, uh, for me, as I conclude, I will say the presence of God in my life is a driving force because um, I believe everything is divine and starts in the, in, 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 in the realm of the spirit. Once you are defeated there and you don't have God in your life, uh, you are likely to fail as a person. What makes you a great success is the presence of the spirit because that's what I believe. And I believe that God leads and guides us. And even when we are wrong, we are able to, to humble yourself. Because humility without Christ is impossible. Humility without God is impossible. Because I cannot say I'm a democratic leader, and I cannot say I'm a dictator. A uh, mind doesn't exist, but it's a bit of everything. I, I apply my mind more uh, before I do anything. And um, I think for people before I, I act. The first quality that you must have is self-respect, the first one. And then you must have discipline as a person. And then you must have a, 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 a integrity because it's everything. It defines who you are, you know? A, 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 when people make, Request and commitments, can you stick by your weight? 
you know? What is it that you do in secret when no one is watching? Uh, it becomes very important that you look at that. And then innovation, be innovative in everything. You cannot walk into a house and say there's nothing to eat while there is uh, cooking, cooking oil, there, is, there are eggs, there's a maize meal, and uh, 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 there is flour and whatever there. So make a plan, you know, and, and you can be innovative about it. That's why our fathers and our mothers made dumplings and all of that. So young people usually they will want to have a, a, a luxurious food and end up wasting a lot, focusing because they want to live a life that they cannot afford at that moment. Be content. If you have, you have. If you don't have, you don't have. And be be a person, or a positive person. To encourage yourself to be positive, a, a, a laugh more than being um, sorrowful and sad. Because when you are sorrowful, you'll have wrinkles quicker. You will be 40 but looking like you're 60. So it becomes very important because I always tell my kids that when I'm, I'm 60 myself, I'll still be putting on my heels, putting on my suit when I'm 60. Even when I'm saying I've got all the intentions in the world, that even when I'm a gogo, -go, I'll be a wise one. <laughs> you cannot say you are humble by, your, by yourself. Same as forgiveness. For, forgiveness is divine. It's not easy for you to forgive people who hurt you. But uh, in order to be able to come back to God and say, God, forgive me or teach me to forgive others, then you build. You need to work out. You know, like a person in the gym, you work out. Leadership is working out. Working out relationships. Uh, hum humbling yourself enough to fix things. Not taking things personal, because if you do, uh, you'll die very fast. It's easy to die in this job. We thank you tonight as we celebrate. May your glory cover us and may you give us so much laughter and rest in your presence. Bless each and every person that is here to celebrate. In Jesus' name, amen.